गुड मॉर्निंग वन एंड ऑल आई वर्बली वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू ऑन द बी आफ ऑफ डॉक्टर एंथोनेडा सिमेटिक मिथर हाई स्कूल आई एम मस्टर अनु स्टैंडर्ड फ्रॉम क्लास टेन बी एंड आई एम द होस्ट फॉर टू डेज इंग्लिश एजुकेशन कॉम्पिटिशन आई हैव अ गुड थॉट फॉर योर प्रेजेंट मॉर्निंग ह्यूमैनिटी इज एन ओशियन इन फ्यूड ऑफ द ओशियन एंड द ट्रूथ ओशियन डजन बिकम द ट्रूथ एंड बेस्ड ऑफ दिस टॉपिक वी विल कॉल अपॉन आर फर्स्ट पार्टिसिपेंट नंदन प्रसाद नार्वेकर फ्रॉम क्लास टेन ए टू एक्सप्रेस हिज थॉट्स अपॉन द टॉपिक ह्यूमैनिटी इज द बेस्ट रिलीजन फॉर मैन Good morning everyone. I am Master Dutta Prasad Nagwekar from class 10th day. Today I would like to express my thoughts on the topic of humanity is the best religion for mankind. People are God's gift to mankind. Everyone has the same body and soul. Respecting the people he created, we are actually respecting the creator. Since mother earth was created, she has seen herself being divided both naturally into subcontinents and then selfishly into countries. She must have never thought that a day would come when she would be divided by her own children in the name of religion. When a child is born, he does not decide at what time or country he will be born. He is not free to choose his parents, nor his physical structure, nor does he know when and where he will die. When so many things cannot be decided by him, he has no right to decide which religion is the best. It is high time when we rise from the petty issues of religion, fighting over our religion is better than others. We all have to rise above the boundaries of caste, creed, color, nationality, and the conventional religion. People need to understand that when they will die, neither the power nor the money will remain with them. Humanity should be the biggest religion for each and every one. A society can be served in this way, thus making earth a better place to live in. We all need to understand that we all are children of nature, and we cannot go on fighting with each other. We need to decide what we are going to give to our next generation: hatred or love. The choice is solely ours. Thank you. Well done, Dr. Prasad. Look at this whole world. From Japan to Russia, from Australia to America, we have seen that love is a dream. 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 And based upon this topic, we will call upon our next participant, Chaitanya Gali from Class 10B, who is going to express his thoughts upon the topic: Love is a dream. Love is a dream. Good morning, respected principal, teachers, and my dear friends. I, Master Chaitanya Gali, would like to express my thoughts on the topic "Make in India, Made in India." Make in India and Made in India have become a topic of debates in recent times. This is making a lot of confusion surrounding the difference between the two. Most of us think that it is the same concept, but precisely they are two different economic programs. Let us discuss these in detail, and we'll get a fair idea of the both initiatives launched by the government. Make in India is an initiative launched by the Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the year 2014 to deal with the issues of stagnating Indian economy and uh, and boosting the economic growth of the country. It aimed at making India an attractive destination for the foreign investors and building a credible business atmosphere. It helped with an ease of doing business by removing various trade barriers in the foreign policies. The foreign investors were encouraged to utilize India's untapped manufacturing potential through FDI, foreign direct investments. This program will boost the GDP of the India in economy as foreign investments will lead to humongous flows of flow of income. Setting up of industries under this initiative will help in the development of the rural areas. As countries from all over the world will bring along the latest technology, India will have an opportunity to, to make use of it. The FDI under this initiative would strengthen the rupee against the domination of American dollar. Made in India, Made in India initiative gave an identity to the products being manufactured in India. This program does not attract any foreign investors and believes in optimum utilization of India's country's available resources. Land. Uh, it encourages domestic factors manufacturers to produce goods in the country by using factors like. Uh, land labor capital entrepreneurship and technology thereby generating employment opportunities for the indian masses it would definitely recognize and endorse the indian home grown brands it will provide the domestic manufacturers with a platform to compete with foreign products and raise the standard of the products efficient utilization of country's talent and resources to manufacture a product differences make in india focuses more on attracting foreign investors to make investments towards the factors of production in india whereas made in india primarily aims at domestic factors of production in the manufacturing sectors thank you thanks chaitan for expressing your thoughts humans don't need to find a world they have a world and they need to be feel empowered to live use it and people need to be feel encouraged to listen and based upon this topic we call our next part of the so my board of class 10th was going to express his thoughts on the topic empowerment of women 
Good morning, respected principal, sir, teachers, and all my dear friends. I, Master Som Sandeep Borkar from Class 10A, would like to express my views on empowerment of women. Women empowerment refers to making women powerful to make them capable of deciding for themselves. Women have suffered a lot through the years at the hands of men. In earlier centuries, they were treated as almost non-existent, as if all the rights belong to men, even something as basic as voting. As the times evolved, women realized the, their power. Thereon began the revolution for women empowerment. As women were not allowed to make decisions for them, women empowerment came in like a breath of fresh air. It made them aware of their rights and how they must make their own place in society, rather than depending on a man. Similarly, similarly the women who do actually work get paid less than the males. Thus, we see how women empowerment is need of the heart. We need to empower this woman to speak up for themselves and never be a victim of injustice. In other words, women from all over the world have been privileged to reach the status they have to. Women must be given equal opportunities in every field, irrespective of gender. Moreover, they must be given equal pay. At last, I will say that we must respect women. We must feel them safe. Thank you. Good morning, respected principal, teachers, and my dear friends. Today, I, Master Bhomik Samla, would like to represent my thoughts on the topic Can we live without smartphones? Yes, before smartphones existed, we did, and it was just fine. Now they are out there, and it would be a shame to not benefit from the great features they offer. The smartphone by itself is just a tool, a platform of services. However, universal human needs like the social need of connecting with each other remain the same by all times. Do we even remember that few years ago we didn't possess a smartphone and surprisingly we survived. Social media free applications like WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat and Twitter have become very popular. Over the past few years, this little object became important for us and for some billions of other people. Uh, smartphones have become very efficient in this past few years. Many entertainment platforms like YouTube, Netflix, Amazon Prime have flourished very well. They help us to watch any sort of entertainment while sitting anywhere in the world, the only basic requirement is the internet. Smartphones are bought because they are functional to do pretty much everything. Do online banking, do online shopping, get a cab, read the news, watch your favorite TV shows and movies, listen to music, play games, and so on. Smartphones have become so important in our daily life, the modern citizen might have become dependent on it. And sometimes his passion for smartphone application leads to addiction. Excessive use of smartphone has its effects like you feel stressed off, cut off or left off without your smartphone. You use your smartphone in inappropriate places. You even sleep with your smartphone. You constantly check for updates, messages, battery life, etc. It's true. Some of us might get a bit addicted to their smartphone and the best solution is certainly not to avoid this useful technology but instead one should decide when to use their smartphone and not the opposite. In the end, it's a lifestyle choice. Thank you. Well done, Bobby, and thanks for expressing your thoughts. As the pandemic situation is going on, we should be aware. We should always use a mask, we should always carry a sanitizer with us and maintain social distancing. Based upon this topic, we will call upon our next participant, Sagar Khatpe from class 10th A. 
was going to express his thoughts upon the topic good habits learned during the pandemic good morning everyone i master sagar dhananjay khatpe from n10a would like to share my views on the topic good manners learned during the pandemic so the experience of 2020 was so hard but it also taught us many lessons the covid-19 pandemic was probably one of the most challenging events in our lifetime and it also has changed unimaginably changed our lifestyle but not all the changes were bad we may eventually do away with the face covering social distancing and certain other norms but the good habits acquired during the time are worth retaining our health and the probability of our survival was and still in our hands quite literally from washing our hands frequently showering regularly keeping ourselves and surrounding clean also last but not the least staying indoors for safety so in this pandemic we really understood how critical hygiene is good habits like this help in protecting not only ourselves but being mindful about protecting others too the pandemic was hard on everyone especially the elderly thoughtful gestures like checking in on neighbors and elders and helping with simple home chores and grocery run were invaluable it made us more empathetic to others and value the community a lot more a good habit that will stand us in a good stead it also has made us socially cohesive self care became a priority and equip us better through this difficult time simple things like eating healthy and nutritious food for better immunity some physical activities etc saw us through some picked up new hobbies like some fostered what they like doing earlier with so many of us spending 24/7 at home many followed pursuits like baking gardening online courses yoga and so on the days spent in lockdown made us rediscover ourselves develop ourselves and get immense satisfaction pursuing hobbies are good habits to nurture in general many people especially in india express intent to support small business more and give preference to local goods and services the profound words of german philosopher friedrich ring true what doesn't kill you only makes you stronger thank you thanks all for expressing your thoughts you so much the school the school i forgot the school is on the anyways i will call upon our next participant rishikesh wala kati from class 10 when you differentiate between this topic which education is better online or offline Good morning, respected principal, teachers, and my dear friends. I, Master Rishikesh Malakadi, would like to express my thoughts on education topic. Which education is better, online or offline? Because of pandemic all over the world, the new normal has become the most bittersweet time. Since the education is essential, and to continue the studies, the new era of online education started. In this education, there is no physical contact. Online education is learning by online classes for the convenience of parents and teachers and students. In comparison, offline education is a traditional learning system where parents and teachers and students have face-to-face learning. Both forms of education have their disadvantages and advantages. Advantages of edu- online education are it is flexible, can be accessed from anywhere with a device and internet connection. It is budget friendly too. Disadvantages of online education: there may be network issue and lots of poor attention to a study. Advantages of offline classes: concept will be clear, clear attention to a study. Disadvantages of offline classes is in pandemic there will be a physical contact. According to me, the better education is online if there is a pandemic, and if not, offline, which has been better than online. Online education. It's just a satisfaction, but offline is a reliable source. We all know that every student has neglected to study in this online education. Many students do not get the proper education. Apart from this, addition to mobile has increased very much. All these issues can be cured only via offline classes. So, friends, you decide which education is better, online or offline. Thank you. Oh, I 
think that the ways of learning are better. Anyways, thanks to Shikesh for expressing your thoughts and I call upon our last participant, Arya Jagdare from Class 10B, to express his thoughts on the topic. Cash us in here. Good morning, respected principal, teachers, and all my dear friends. Hi, I am Master Arya Jagdare. I would like to share my thoughts about this topic named Cashless India. You know, the dream of Digital India's first step is a cashless India. With this dream, on the evening of 8th November 2016 at sharp 8 pm, our Prime Minister, the Narendra Modi, announced the demonetization of Rs 500 and Rs 1000 notes in the country. The historic decision was based on various reasons, one of which was a cashless India. On this topic of cashless India, we will be talking about what it means to be cashless, the various alternatives of our monetary system, and what are the advantages and disadvantages for a country that has adopted cashless in its economy. First of all, what does a cashless economy mean? What is the meaning of cashless economy? A cashless economy means the liquidity in the system is exchanged between two people through debit and credit cards. Now, let's talk about advantages of cashless India. First, black money will be reduced. Second, transparency. Corruption in India exists right from the ministerial level to a watchman level. All because of lack of transparency in our monetary system. Transparency is a big issue in our economy. Corruptions like this can be reduced to a great extent if a cashless economy is achieved. Third, easy and simple. With so many technological revolution, revol revolutions happening around, it will be impossible to find someone without a smartphone in 21st century. Disadvantages of cashless India Hacking and online theft. As technology is improving every day, so are online fraud and cheating incidents. Second, lack of infrastructure. We are not just talking about government infrastructure, but on an individual level as well. You need a gadget, a smartphone, a data connectivity and electricity for charging phones every day to be able to make online transactions often. Before aiming for a dream of a cashless India to come to, government should take care of these problems. Pro uh, these problems right? Every coin has two sides. Similarly, even a cashless economy has advantages and disadvantages. Now it's up to us on how we leverage these advantages for a betterment of our nation and how we transform these disadvantages into opportunities and come up with the innovative solutions. Thank you. Thanks Aryan and thanks all the participants for expressing your thoughts and thanks all the viewers for sparing your valuable time and listening to our thoughts and viewing our video.